Hi everyone, Bob Mesa Plumber here and welcome to the Simpson Fishing Muskie Classic Top 40. Today we'll be taking you to Lake Vermilion nestled in the pristine wilderness of northern Minnesota. The event, the 2005 Simply Fishing Muskie Classic, headquartered out of Bayview Lodge on the east and Vermilion Dam Lodge on the west. Simply Fishing Muskie Classic is the richest event in the history of muskie fishing and will reward the winners more than $80,000 for their efforts. And today, you'll start to witness what it took to make the top 40 and a chance at the nearly $210,000 in cash payback. These anglers are the best among the best here today. Anglers have united from virtually every corner of North America to compete in this prestigious event. If you're among those climbing the ladder in the industry today, this is considered a target event, a must fish if you will. If you're among the true legends in the sport, you're in attendance. Lake Vermilion is without question a level playing field for this event. She's big very big, over 45,000 surface acres bound by more than a thousand miles of shoreline and countless reefs, weed beds and islands to search. But before we get into the anglers, let's get into the reason why we're here. Lake Vermilion didn't have a viable population of muskie, much less monsters, all short 15 years ago. Through the efforts of organizations such as the DNR, Muskie Zinc and others, the state has seen it fit to stock this incredible resource. Anglers throughout North America and Canada are finding this to be among the best in the world and in fact has become as many have a broodstock lake of such for the state's muskie program. To ensure the necessary elements of a quality stocking program the DNR will pay close attention to spring stripping of mature females while simultaneously milking the males in attendance. Nets called fike nets are distributed throughout the system. The net itself is unique. It's constructed of a multitude of elements. A guide net is stationed so that it literally guides wandering muskies into a collection area where they will be retained until harvest. To ensure a successful recruitment program for the muskie, DNR biologists will choose what are considered prime spawning areas for net placement, such as backwater areas, quiet bays, some of the more northerly shorelines and in some cases underwater points or saddle areas where history has proven successful spawning. The nets are attended to on a daily basis. No fish will be left unattended for long periods of time. In fact, fisheries technicians such as Jody Stewart, Rick Walsh or Chris Woods often see to the pulling of these nets two times a day. Upon arriving at the net they will start pulling at the closed hoop in and pull toward the main holding cage. At this point, they will open the cage and proceed with the evacuation, stripping and the milking process. Folks, this is no easy job. This process generally takes place very early in the calendar, often long before our regular muskie season, which is in fact partly responsible for the quality of fish we have in our state. We as muskie fishermen can only thank organizations such as Muskies Inc. and the state legislature for their commitment to our enjoyment called muskie fishing. But we're here to cover the classic. So now for the rest of the story. Day one found us holding on. Wind swept out of the northwest driving the air temps from the 80s into the high 30s, barely breaking the 50 degree mark by the end of the day. The winds kicked up to 30 mile per hour with gusts even stronger and she rolled. Waves exceeding four feet were reported and boat control was at a premium. At least for those who found fish during pre-fish in the open water basins. Because this is a catch and release event and the anglers will be forbidden to transport any muskies, we, the judges, will have to go to them. This in and of itself offers its own set of dilemmas. To effectively witness, measure and release each fish, we will stagger judge boats along the 42 mile length of this incredible resource. Each boat will be supplied with any one or more of the following devices to monitor contestants. Cell phones, marine band radios, and satellite phones will all be used to monitor and communicate throughout the event. Our goal is to get to these fish in short order, generally in less than five minutes. The teams have all been instructed in the rules not to remove the fish from the water. It is imperative these fish remain in the net, in the water, at the boat site until a judge arrives. Each judge boat is outfitted with a very large bump board. 
a pick to mark the longest ray of the tail and a measuring device. Each and every judge kit is exactly the same, ensuring integrity within the measuring process. As this event unfolds, you'll have the pleasure of witnessing some of the largest muskies ever videotaped during a televised muskie tournament. Some of these fish could very well break the 40 pound mark. That being said, I would personally like to recognize our judges for doing an outstanding job during this event. These folks would otherwise go unnoticed and that would simply be wrong. Without them, this event could not have enjoyed the 100% release that it did. Sit back now and enjoy day one, two, and three of the 2004 Simply Fishing Musky Classic as it unfolds from the docks of Vermilion Dam Lodge and Bayview Resort on Vermilion Lake in Minnesota. Learn valuable information from the field of 178 anglers, making this the Simply Fishing Musky Classic the richest event in musky fishing history. Cold fronts are never welcome in the world of fishing, especially tournament fishing, where the first place prize money can easily exceed $83,000. However, Mother Nature has no interest in prize money or the angling fields for that matter. The facts were on the day prior to the classic, the midday temps were in the 80s, and by ease off at 7 a.m. the next morning, they would barely break the freezing mark. What does this mean to the anglers? What does this do to the fish? And how many of these pros can successfully adapt? These are the questions we'll soon answer. The 2004 Classic Field is comprised of many different talents displaying many levels of skills including such disciplines as structure fishing, isolated elements, or trolling for that matter. The anglers competing in the Classic will be fishing a 40 inch minimum muskie to qualify as a legal fish, unlike other muskie events such as those in Wisconsin where 32 inch fish can be measured. These anglers will have to seek fish near the 20 pound benchmark just to make the cut. Any fish being measured under the 40 inch minimum will simply be released back into Lake Vermilion unharmed. However, the disappointment to the angler could be long lasting. Oh boy. Oh, 30 and a half. Can't we bring it to the nearest five inches? Good. <laughs> Too old for next year. Muskies do not tolerate being transported, and in the state of Minnesota, it's illegal to do so. All classic fish are released in exactly the same location they were captured to ensure a 100% survival of tournament fish. I'm sitting here with James Rorick and Dave Swenson, two of the contestants here at the Classic this year. You guys put a fish in the boat, which is going to mean you probably have a berth to the top 30 cut on Saturday morning. Still a day of fishing left, okay? I'm not going to ask you any particulars on how you caught your fish or what kind of conditions or where you caught but It's irrelevant right now. What I want to get from you folks, if I could, is a little insight on why you're here at the Classic. What, what compelled you guys to come to this event and spend the kind of money that it takes to come here and support this effort? We're both local. We're from, uh, I'm from Cotton, Minnesota, and I stay on the lake, and Jim's from Embarrass, and... Uh, we uh, fish the lake quite often and figured this is an opportunity for us, maybe. Yeah, Embarrass, isn't that where it gets cold all winter? <laughs> Very cold. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, really, you're seizing the moment. The local water, you have an opportunity to fish it. You know a little bit about it, probably a lot about it. Mm -hmm. And you figure this is a good time to come in and show your skills. Yeah, uh, basically, that's basically. it. Basically. Yeah. A little, you know, I like the competitive uh, edge to it, too. How do you like the format, the three-day format, with the with the breakdown going back to zero on the fourth day on the top thirty, and then again on the top ten on the last day? I think that'll make it real interesting. You really will. I think want even it. a couple of locals might have a good shot. Now, I, I think I, I agree with you. Locals are going to have a very good shot. There's a lot of fish being caught, a lot of big fish being caught. Without going overboard on it, are you guys on some big fish? We we know where some big fish are. You know where some big fish are. Some of the teams have already started talking about they're kind of saving some of those fish right now. Their strategies are changing. They've got a couple of fish on the board or a fish on the board. It's looking like they might make that 30 cut. Some of them have even made the comment that they're starting to pre-fish again for the third day or fourth day. How do you guys feel about that concept? I think, um, especially if we put another fish in the boat tomorrow, we may start to do some more work. Looking around. So you'll go in, you'll bank your two fish, and then you'll start putting your efforts really toward the first of the paydays. Yeah. Because you have to get past day four to get to the payday. That's right. You have to do it. Okay, is there anything you'd like to tell the viewers? You, you folks are, this is your chance to, to tell them anything you want to tell them about musky fishing, how long you've been in it, uh, personal best, things of that nature. Why don't we start with you? 
Um, my personal best is a 51 inch that was caught on Vermilion. Um, I'm addicted to the sport. I love it. Uh, it gets in your blood. I fish, I don't know, 50, 60 days a year. I guide on the lake, so it's my passion. So when you stay, you know where there's big ones, and your big one's 51 out of you. You bet you know where there's some big ones, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yep. We've seen some big fish. And? Well, Bob, I got my first muskin when I was 12, not 40 years ago. You've been addicted. I've been at this for a while. <laughs> You've been addicted a long time, haven't you? When I moved up here back in 1978, there wasn't too many muskie fish. I had to travel to Canada. Yep. Now with the quality of fishing that we have in Lake Vermilion and elsewhere in Minnesota, you don't have to go that far. We, so, we talked a little bit about that on the water out here to the audiences in general about how this fishery didn't exist as a muskie fishery back in the early 80s. That's right. Fish weren't here. They're not, they're not indigenous to this system. They are through the efforts of sportsmen's clubs, uh, fishing organizations, things of that nature that have helped, with the DNR, keep in mind, that have helped get these fish planted in this system. And it really lends an entirely different viable sport fish, doesn't it? That's right, yeah. And Dave and I are both members of the Arrowhead chapter of Muskie Gate, a local. Muskie Which is a huge chapter. organization. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure that everything, the fish are kind of taken care of and everything I've seen so far, things are looking really good. Well, thank you. So you have, you have seen the judge, judge Bolt's work. You have seen how fast or expedient we can be, how well we're communicating, things of that nature. Uh, can you just expand a little bit on on how you see the overall event running? Well, other than the weather, <laughs> <laughs> That's slightly out of our control. <laughs> um, I think it's been running pretty well. Uh -huh. You know, this is it's been hard. It's been two years in the making. Yes. And, uh, it's doing okay. And I think the format's good. The ease outs, everything is it's nice and orderly. Uh, so everybody's going out. There's no big rush. And also with coming in, that extra half hour to come in, that, that helps a lot. Too. That makes a big difference, doesn't it? When not everybody's rushing. Now, we're breaking you guys into three flights, but still it gives you a half hour after your flight, son. You can fish right to the last second. Yep. There's a judge boat going to be someplace that's willing to measure your fish if you catch it. And it gives you a, gives you a whole half hour to get your way back here safely. So that's a, that's a good thing you like. Yeah. Super. Okay. Now, when he gets the boat with me, Jim, yep. come up here in the front, please. I want to have you take the net and hold his net, okay? Go ahead and take his net. Hold your net. I'm going to get the point. I got the net. Okay. The board's going to be down here in the seat. There's some real nice fish. Did you catch the first fish or second or what? First. First fish, okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift the fish. I want to lay it on the deck of the boat real quick. Okay, then I'm going to grab its jaw and take hold of the fish, okay? Then I want you to come by me. Reminds me of Look out. Yeah, Okay, I'm going to the board. Why we do it against the seats. Now everything's nice and soft. Okay, take the pick right there. Top tail, right here, right here. Take this. Top tail is long. Okay, It's Mark? Yep. Got her in there good? Yep. Okay, kind of pump her once real good. I'm gonna set her back, okay? Yep. You're good. Oh, that'll stay. That'll stay. Okay. Let's take yep. her back. Get her back. Good job, guys. Folks, well, just another example of what these pros have come to this system for. We're going to be on the rocks in a second. Let's get this girl back. The shoreline you're seeing us brush up on here, folks, with the bull rushes in the rock, that's exactly what these fish use. Folks, you are in with an exact 42. 42. 42 on the money. Exact All right. 42. Exactly. Okay, I need your team number. 26. 26. Okay, team number 26. 
folks, what we're doing here is we're validating the fish. Every judge is carrying the same paperwork that I'm carrying. The teams carry paperwork, I carry paperwork. We validate the fish. That way we cross-reference everything at the end of the event. You wonder how $200,000 can be spread out equally? It's because the judging is uniform and the measuring and the, the whole technique that we use is all uniform from judge to judge. Okay, let me get you. Okay, you can hop back in there if you want. We're done. Okay. Gentlemen, go get another fish. As we look at our current leaders, it's important to note that with 178 of the nation's top muskie anglers in the hunt for the $200,000 at stake, you can bet there will be some excitement. The game plan is simple. Make the first cut. At the end of the first three days, the officials will tally up the English results thus far in the event and only the top 30 will move on. However, it should be noted for all of you out there who think this is a cakewalk or that muskies are easy, <laughs> only 20 teams weathered the storm and were capable of moving on. That meant 158 teams failed to catch a legal muskie and were headed home. Where were you? The cream has truly risen to the top. Who will make the next cut? Or even more important, who will take home the title of the Simply Fishing Musky Classic Champion and the $80,000 paycheck that goes with it? You won't believe it. Dave, Wayne, you guys are awesome. You're just awesome. We had a good day. Well, you, we, let's back up, though, because you had more than a good day. You came to the dock this morning after everybody was easing out. You guys were on the dock, the steward boys, as you're being called. You were on the dock. Your boat was there, and it was wounded. You guys were calm about it. You were collected. You got the boat running. We had to go. We took off, and it wasn't but about a half hour later, you came down the lake past us, and I said to Jason, our cameraman, I said, Jason, there's the stewards. They're coming through. They got their boat fixed. It wasn't too long after that, and we got the first radio call and you guys' first fish. And you said, come on down, we got a fish. So we go rolling down there. Tell us a little bit about your first fish. We had three things that we, you know, we always look for, woods, you know, weeds, and rocks. Yeah. And I just told Wayne, I said, everything's here. This it's is all just here. A, yeah. This is just a great spot. Yeah. And uh, I said it dropped off. It was like five feet, dropped off to like 12 or 13. And I no more than got that out of my mouth. And hey, I got one, you know, and it was just going like, and two seconds later, I was in the net, and uh, that, we were calling for the judge boat. Yeah, we made the run down, uh, we came into the area that you guys were fishing, and we pulled up there, and you had a fat fish, man, that thing's eating something other than the normal bait fish, very fat fish, uh, you were excited about it, we put it on the board, we measured the fish, it was a legal fish, your first one on the board, and one of you two, and I don't know which, but one of you two said to me, don't go very far. We thought we were on fish because we had a couple northerns up and then we had that muskie and uh, we thought we were on fish right away. Oh, this is their second fish or first fish? Second fish, I don't know for sure. Okay, search fish is their first legal fish in the boat for the classic for these guys. They had boat problems this morning, folks. They put the motor back together. They're back out here doing it. Let's get her back. Well, we didn't slide out too far and it wasn't too long and we were sent back in on you guys to get your bigger fish. Which one of you got the bigger fish? I did. Wayne got the bigger one. Wayne got the bigger fish. I was lucky. You were lucky. lucky. Yeah. And it was a nice fish. Now, both of them are nice fish. They're gorgeous. Hey, you got my camera? Okay, take your net. Take your net. No. Nope. There you go. I got it sitting right here. I got it sitting in front of this moment. Well, you're going to be taking a picture of me like I took one of you. All right? Should I jump over there? No. Oh, all right. I didn't know that. Once okay. in a while, I even catch a fish. There you go. Okay, your long tail is your top tail, gentlemen. Come here. I'm going to hold her head. Take the pick and set it right at the tail. Knowing that you're probably in, there's no question, you're probably going to be in the top 30. I would find it very hard to believe that you won't make the top 30. How are your strategies going to change? Are you going to start, you talked about a minute ago, strategies. Let me hear some of the strategies you have. We've been going over strategies since uh, we got <laughs> off the lake with uh, Dick Heckles. Yep. Dick, Dick spin up here and he's going like, hey, do this, go here, do that. And... Uh, We've just been thinking, and we got a lot more thinking to do, you know, before Saturday and uh, into, if we make the cut for Sunday. Let's get her back. we got a lot of thinking to do. Huh? Yeah. Congratulations, Thanks, guys. Thanks, Okay, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Should I grab her and... Uh, oh, she's fine. Her? No, she's in her element right now. She's in good shape. Boys, 46. Yeah! I'm longer than mine, and mine looks bigger. 46. 46. <laughs> Oh, hey, biggest fish I ever caught. Yeah, biggest fish. You guys are kicking some tail today, huh? And, and we should.
tomorrow we were going to go out just fishing again and uh, try another put another fish on the board but tomorrow we're going to go out for a big fish we're going to try to get a big fish tomorrow because we know if we put a big fish on the board tomorrow big points what's big points and it'll put us in first place and then whatever happens saturday and sunday happens but we know we're going to be sitting good with three fish that's a pretty good strategy mm -hmm. it's got merit just awesome Spinner baits, jerk baits, top water, soft plastics without going into detail. Where's your focus without giving up anything? Jerk baits. Let's, jerk go, baits. let's just Fly stay. Baits. Let's just stay with jerk baits. So no water. Water. We'll get more out of you on Sunday. Both of you gentlemen, thanks for attending. Thank you, thanks for coming and supporting the effort here at the classic. I'm wishing you all the best. Thank you. Thank you.